you will begin to see tremendous change transformation in your life when you start living for god's purpose what does that mean it means using your life in service to him it means using your life uh, as an act of worship to him and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're sitting there and worshiping the lord although it could be that too but I'm speaking more on the lines of every time you choose to forgive someone who has hurt you because it's the right thing to do because the Lord asks that of you. And uh, Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So it's a love towards him. And, and when you choose to forgive, and I'm using forgiveness as an example, as opposed to holding the grudge because yes they have hurt you yes they are in the wrong yes you are in the right you know that they know that everybody knows that when you choose to forgive anyway that's a form of worship to the lord that's a, that's a kind of respect to the lord that's a heart that loves the lord and chooses to follow in his ways because those are his ways so <clears throat> you will begin to see tremendous change transformation in your life when you start using your life for his purpose when you start living in a way that is of service service to him to him uh, uh, act of worship to him listen to this the bible says in the old testament i can't remember the the, the verse now but you can go google it enter my gates with thanksgiving in your heart enter my gates gates in this verse means the presence of god so that would be translated enter god's presence with thanksgiving well when we enter god's presence with thanksgiving whose presence do you think you enter with ungratefulness if we enter god's presence with gratitude Whose presence do you think you enter with complaints? If you're doing the will of God by forgiving, whose will are you doing? By unforgiveness. And this can go so deep. Pride, humility, hate, love. Wickedness, kindness selfishness selflessness so when you start living a way that is of god if you start using your life for his purpose that is when you will see tremendous 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 change you will not begin to you cannot begin to imagine what the lord has in store for you for those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose I have seen so many Christians, and sadly, <clears throat> I have seen so many Christians where they have received Jesus Christ into their heart at some point in life. They have been given the Holy Spirit at some point in life. Yet they're living a life that is uh, lukewarm or backsliding or <clears throat> thinking that it's okay just to, just because you're going to church on a Sunday. You lift up your hands, you praise him, you glorify him with your lips only, but your hearts are far from him. And then you return home after the service and then you continue the rest of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, living life as you want. A life that is revolved around you, a life that is of service to you, a life where it's it's almost like a self-worship it's all about you what i like what i want where i want to go how i feel what i want to eat what i want to do what I, me myself and i that's a form of self self-worship the devil does not care whether you worship yourself whether you worship your phone whether you worship money whether you worship a person, as long as it's not, or as long as that worship is not directed to God, that's all he cares about. That's all he cares about. 
And this is why a lot of Christians are not seeing this tremendous change in their lives. This is why a lot of Christians um, are still in bondage. I'll, I'll give you an example. I have so many people who email me for healing or deliverance. And the Lord Jesus Christ, by his grace, it is all by his grace. It is not by my power, nor by my might. I do not have such power. It is all of the power of God. It's all his doing. He receives all of the glory. The Lord Jesus, by his grace, he heals every single one of them. He delivers every single one of them. Every single one. Now pay attention to what happens next. <clears throat> Notice in the Bible, sometimes the Lord Jesus would heal people or they would be in his presence and he would give them an instruction. And after following that instruction, the healing would happen. As an example, the 10 lepers came to Jesus. They were face to face with him. He could have very easily healed them right there and then on the spot. He could have. He has this power. He could have. But he didn't. He said to them, go and show yourself to the priest. And on the way, after they had finished their encounter with Jesus, turned their back to Jesus, started walking away from Jesus, obeying the instruction he had given them, then they were healed on the way. That's an instruction. I'll give you another instruction. Jesus encountered this blind man who was blind from birth, and he spat on his hands and made a thick clay with the soil of, of the ground. And he put this thick clay on the man's eyes. Now pay attention, the man was blind from birth. But someone who is completely blind does not necessarily mean that they do not at least receive light rays. Most blind people receive light rays. But after Jesus put in this thick clay on his eyes, he, this man is not, seeing any, not, even, is not even receiving light rays. In that time where the situation looked worse than before his encounter with Jesus, what did Jesus do? Heal him on the spot? No, he gave him an instruction. He said to him, now go and wash your eyes in the pool. Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus didn't say, now let me take you. Jesus didn't say, hey, you come here and help him. He said, you go now. So the condition is probably looking worse. And this man gets up. And what does he do? He follows the instruction of the Lord and he goes. And as he fulfills, as he is obedient to the instruction of the Lord and washes his eyes, he comes back seeing. Now you can say, why didn't Jesus heal him right there on the spot? Why did he have to send him somewhere? Well, every time the Lord gives an instruction, and notice the instructions, it's different for different people. Every time the Lord gives, gives an instruction, it is for a purpose. There is a reason why the Lord has given you that specific instruction, either directly or either through his disciples. Sometimes the Lord gives me an instruction for somebody. There is a, a specific reason why that instruction has been given to that specific purpose, to that specific person. There is something that must be exercised in that person. when following the instruction. And when they follow that instruction, that thing that needs to be exercised within them is being exercised. And then healing follows. And so with this blind man, it could be that Jesus said to him, um, do you want to be made healed? Do you want to be made well? In the Before the healing, Jesus said to him, do you want to be made well? And the guy could have answered, the blind man could have answered, yes, Lord, but he didn't answer in this manner he said yes but i see starting the complaints starting the victim mentality starting with the i can't starting the thinking his thinking off with i can't i there's no one it's just me no one can help me so starting his thinking of like that yes lord but nobody's here to help me to get into the pool because that was a pool where once a year, once every so and so, the angels would come down from heaven, stir up the water, and the first person who would step in would be healed of any infirmity they had. And that's why the guy said, yes, but I have no one to help me into the pool. 
That's not what Jesus asked him. Jesus just asked him, do you want to be made well? And um, so there was an issue with that guy of doing things by himself, of going. He was waiting for other people to help him. And that's why Jesus gave him that specific man, that specific instruction. You go. I could, could you imagine if that guy continued with, with his old thinking? Yes, but I have no one to take me. But he didn't say that. He just said, yes, Lord. Then he went immediately. There was something that needs to be, that, that's what needed to be exercised in him. And so sadly, what I'm seeing with a lot of Christians, when they come to me for healing and deliverance, the Lord Jesus Christ delivers them. It could be a demonic bondage. And this is, it's not that I know they've been delivered because I do deliver it, so I know what it looks like. But they also confirm it. They declare it. I've been free. I'm free. And then after some days, it's, uh, and then I give him an instruction from the Lord. It could be an instruction, meditate on this verse as an example. And then after some days, they message me, I'm starting to feel the symptoms come back. And, and my response is always, did you follow the instructions? Did you meditate on that word? Uh, yeah, but I pray every morning. That's not why I asked you if you pray every morning. Did you meditate on that verse day and night? Uh, yeah, but I've always been a believer. That's not why I asked you. Did you meditate on that verse? And after much time of them trying to stray me here and stray me there, and I'm picking up on it because I have discernment from the Holy Spirit. Um, after much time of that, then I, um, I get an answer out of them. No, I haven't been meditating on that. So then you haven't followed that specific instruction that was given to you by your Lord. And so that thing that needed to be exercised in you was is not being exercised in you. And so that's a form, you know. There's a way that the Lord asks us to walk. There's an order that he wants us to walk. He wants us to su su surrender our lives to him. He wants us to receive his prophets. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. In other words, he who receives the man of God as being a man of God will receive a reward from that prophet, from that healer, from that minister. So when I, I give them an instruction from the Lord, this and this, and they're not doing it, this is telling me that they're not receiving a prophet in the name of a prophet, and so they're not receiving a prophet's reward. They're not following that order of God. Notice how God works in the Bible. He would always heal and deliver people, not always, but mainly, he would always heal and deliver people through his chosen vessels. So when you're not doing things God's way, you're giving so many open space for the enemy to come into your life. And, and that's showing that you're not following in the ways of God. You're not following his word. You're not following his ways. You're, you're not doing things, you're, you're not using your life in service to him. You're not using your life as an act of worship to him. You're not using for your life for his purpose. <clears throat> you're not doing your daily sacrifices. And that's what God wants. He wants you to do your daily sacrifices. A daily sacrifice could be where you would usually respond in unforgiveness. You're responding in forgiveness. That's a sacrifice you've just made. Where you would usually respond with selfishness, you're responding in selflessness. That's a sacrifice you made. Okay. The Holy Spirit will give you your daily sacrifices that you need to make, and it will look different for each people. If I'm a forgiven person, there's no need for me to do that sacrifice because I'm already living that way. So my sacrifice will be something different to yours. Okay, the Lord is wanting all of us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So get in the word of God, get in his ways, get live as the word tells you, live according to God's way, Set, uh, uh, live for him, for his purpose. If you love Jesus, you will follow his commandments. Stop making it about you and make it about him. That's when you will see tremendous, tremendous, tremendous change in your life. A lot of people are not seeing this tremendous ways in their life because it's not about Jesus and not following his commandments. It's all about themselves. And that needs to stop. If you want to see tremendous ways change in your life, follow the Lord Jesus Christ.